see. All right, it looks like it says it is live. What's up, guys? I'm doing a live stream at home today. But before I get started, let me just jump over to my other window here. I just want to double check that when this thing loads, the sound is working properly and you guys get here. So give me one second as I'm loading up my screen. All right, so I got my screen working over there. Let me just organize my stuff and good to go. So there should be a chat room here. What's up? Oh. All right, guys, so welcome to Raw Fishing live stream. And today I'll be giving you guys a recap of my summer fishing. So um, I definitely want to wait a little bit, make sure that I have enough people in here so that I can chat with some folks. So um, let's see. I don't think uh, there's anyone who joined the room yet. Here we go. We got a first guy right here. What's up? Me, me, Anna Manny. What's up, dude? How you doing? Uh, welcome to my live stream. I will be doing some recap of my summer fishing, and then I'm going to talk about some fall stuff. So uh, hang tight. We'll just wait for some people to jump on in. But in the meantime, feel free to ask me any questions. I am starting, I guess you could say, uh, Q&A se Q session early, just so that we can have some folks in here before I start and jump into my topics. Hey, Rigo, how you been doing? Any snakeheads lately? I haven't been fishing in Collingswood for a while for snakeheads, but um, let's see. Today is kind of cold and rainy, and just want to let you know that snakehead fishing, the bite's going to slow down very soon because they don't really like the cold. And last year, I believe snakehead stopped biting at middle of October. So if you want to get your snakehead game on, this is probably going to be your last month, the month of September get some good fishing in with the cold weather that's been you know coming around lately uh i think it might end sooner than middle of october so make sure you get out there and get some snakeheads if you're still into um trying to catch some snakeheads all right but anyway i'm not sure if it, uh, there's gonna be a lot of folks because i just decided to jump on my computer before I, I go do some shopping um so i just decided to do a quick live stream so why don't we just get started and jump into my summer recap so i got my notepad here i wrote a couple some notes here and if you guys have questions that i can't answer i'll definitely write them down so i can get back to you next time so let's talk about the summer fishing i hope everyone's summer fishing up uh was pretty well i think for me we didn't really have any hurricanes up here uh before i move on i gotta say that i wish um you know, with Hurricane Harvey and everything, that everyone is safe. And, you know, th there are folks who are struggling out there. So who, who, if you guys have the means to, make sure you guys donate to your local Red Cross so that they can start sending stuff uh, and support of uh, folks down in Texas. But, yeah, um, weather for us up here in New Jersey has been pretty good. Um, and, you know, fishing is – it was okay this summer. I didn't get anything tremendously big, but I've been out doing – my normal jigging pigging uh for bass but you guys may have realized that i kind of transitioned into a specific type of fishing this summer uh it was more of a laid back fishing with light tackle and i've been um fishing for crappies and largemouth bass and pickerels using all light tackle you know 1 16th ounce jig head and small little grub tail and it's very budget friendly, so I decided to go, you know, stick with it. So I might continue sticking with it because it's, you can't beat that. You know, you have a couple of dollars, you go out there, you can fish for like many, many, many days, and you know, you don't need to spend that much money uh, to catch fish and have a good time. So, yeah, I've been, I've been doing mo mostly um, those stuff there. I did a few drop shot session, but not a lot. Again, most of the time, I think the grub, grub tail, and jig head were kind of the, my primary go-to so i think what i'll do is in fall i'll go back to some drop shot fishing so that i could have some fun uh picking out some deep water fish let's see who's here so far rigo you retracted a message so i guess i missed that sorry uh fish finder let's say what states have you fished in what state to fish on your bucket list fish finder that's a very good question so um in the United States, I've fished, of course, in the tri-state area. So I fished Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. I went to Florida. I fished in Maryland. And I have fished in 
Hawaii as well, or shall we call it Hawaii? So, <laughs> um, Hawaii is definitely very, very interesting. They have all sorts of fish, freshwater fish and saltwater fish. Um, but yeah, I will definitely go back to Hawaii and do some fishing again. Yo, Michael, what's up, dude? Thank you for coming to my live stream, guys. Uh, but let me ask, uh, answer uh, Fish Finder's second part um, question, which is what state to fish is on your bucket list? So I definitely, definitely want to go to New York to do freshwater. I did like South New Yorkish for um, saltwater in the past, but I really want to get some New York fish, like freshwater fish. Um, I know they have some deep, deep reservoirs with like a lot of smallmouth bass. Smallmouth bass is something I want to spend more time fishing, but New Jersey, the South Jersey side, we don't really have that much. I would have to go towards PA side, which is the closest to get some, or I can go north, which is Spruce Run, which is on my bucket list right here for fall. I'll be going to Spruce Run to get some deep water um, smallmouth bass. They're actually going to come up a little more shallow. They're going to be hitting up all the points and drop off and you really get them really easily with drop shots so that's that's what i'm probably going to do so um all right so um let's leave the questions um on the side for a little bit i'm going to wrap up a couple more things that i've done during the summer then we're gonna have a little break we have all the questions uh asked at that time then we'll talk about the future shall we all right guys so um a couple other things i've done during the summer I trolled a lot. I went up to uh, fish with Zach Merchant and also Michael. Michael. Um, we did trolling for lake trout, and we also did hybrid fishing. Heck, we even met up with Leo. I bought, um, I picked up Leo, and we went to fish two places in one day. We fished first in the morning at Round Valley Reservoir, getting some rainbow trout and Lakers. It didn't do too well, so we decided to take a break. Then at the evening, we went to Spruce Run. And of course, you guys probably seen it at Leo's um, uh, channel, Extreme Philly Fishing. And we did OK. We did not bad. Didn't have that much time because it seems like the end of summer, the light is, you know, ends a lot quicker. So um, too bad Leo did not get his first hybrid. With that said, he said he will be back. So look forward to, you know, the three of us getting out there for some more hybrids, hopefully soon. And um, oh yeah, speaking of Leo, I did go down to Delaware. I went to one of my old stomping ground. I went to Brandywine Creek and we did some creek fishing. I did a um, dog hair challenge. I was <laughs> So my little brother, he's, he's always grooming his husky and he gave me some fur and he was like, hey, here's some fur. Why don't you go catch some fish with it? I was like, okay. Um, I only caught like, I think three fish, but I got most of my jigs snagged so it was unfortunate but you know I, th I thought it was a pretty fun challenge and my brother told me that he would like me to do that challenge one more time and he wanted me to catch more and bigger fish so if you guys want to see me catch more fish using dog hair you know leave, let, uh, leave me a comment you know let me know if i should go try to catch some some uh, fish with some dog hair all right so yeah that's basically my recap of summer uh, I do have a video, and I was fishing right behind Six Flags, but I don't want to spoil everything. So you guys going to stay tuned for that video. I'm actually editing that video today. Uh, so look forward to that video probably coming out within a day or two. All right, let's jump back to the chat box. So if you guys want to have, uh, if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to ask me about my fishing experience, things I want to do and accomplish in the fall. You guys can start that now. Let's see. Oh, salmon fishing. Dude, that's a good idea. So when I said New York, I actually had salmon fishing on the bucket list for sure. So um, I don't know too much about salmon fishing. Uh, so maybe I should look that up. I'm going to definitely write that down right now. Put that salmon fishing. I think it might be a fall run. Correct me if I'm wrong. There might be a fall run in some of the rivers that connect to the Great Lakes. October, okay, October, all right. We'll look into that, Michael. So maybe we'll get a large couple of us, we'll just drive up there and we'll catch some fish. Eric, okay, upstate, okay. Hey, look, man, now we got some people talking about salmon fishing at upstate. So um, 
maybe we could do a collaboration, get up there and do some nice salmon fishing. What kind of tackle would you actually need to catch these salmon? I know I have those freaking light tackle, five foot, medium light, four pound test line. You think that'll snap in like one hit? I think my freaking uh, rod will just be ripped off my hand and pfft, it's gone. I think people use like surf rods and you know, at least a nine weight fly rod to catch those salmon. But uh, okay, okay. So it seems like you guys know what to do. So I will be pinging you guys um, shortly after this live stream so that we get some information, do some little research. And no, we will not be throwing sticks of dynamite in the river. All right, <laughs> you don't wanna do that. But um, sure, uh, sounds like salmon fishing is gonna be added to the bucket list for fall fishing. All right, but um, all right, so it doesn't seem like there are many people here asking questions right now because I guess there's not many people. Who, who, who's, who's in here anyway? Can we, get, can we get a roll call here? I know this uh, whole Google thing, um, not Google, YouTube thing changed lately. So uh, the whole interface is a little bit different. But anyway, all right, so let, let's do this, guys. Let's talk about what I'm going to do this fall, shall we? So we talked about spruce earlier. So I definitely want to get back to spruce. Spruce Run Reservoir, which is in Clinton, New Jersey. It's one of my favorite places to go. It's about a half, a one and a half hours for me to drive up there. But it's uh, it's beautiful. You get big crappies. I caught my personal best smallmouth bass mm, last October. Maybe no, two Octobers ago. It was three pounds, seven ounce. And I was drop shot fishing a, I believe it was a three inch gulp minnow. And that, that was freaking fun but uh i w i am looking forward to breaking my personal best smallmouth bass and i think i might be able to do that either at spruce run or i could do that at merrill creek because i actually lost my biggest biggest smallmouth i ever hooked on to it was like a size of a freaking nfl football <laughs> i mean like it was it was huge and fat so oh look we got a new guy hey what's up remy how are you doing thank you for joining my live stream all right so uh, you didn't miss much so far. I just recapped some of my fishing uh, in the summer, and I'm talking about some of the things I will be doing in fall. All right. Uh, let's see what else is on a chat box. Let's see. Are you ready for ice fishing? Actually, ice fishing is going to be winter, right? So I am not ready for ice fishing, but you made a very good point to uh, bring that up because I think we may have talked about it the last time we were fishing together, is that whoever are interested in ice fishing, you must buy your fishing gears now. So like the tip-ups, the tip-up stuff gets sold out completely by October. All right. So you got to you gotta buy, buy them now. If you try to buy them December, it's going to be like a back order. All right. Yes, it is getting cold, Michael. So that's why you should buy them now for sure. Um, I think in the state of New Jersey, I think it's five tip, three or five tip ups or something like that. So I'm going to start buying a couple. I'll probably buy a couple high end one. Hayabusa. I think if you guys scroll down in my box somewhere, I may have put a list of maybe, maybe not. So uh, um, yeah, may, maybe in my Facebook, what I'll do is I'll link a couple of things that I'm going to be interested in buying, or maybe in my uh, next couple of videos, I'm going to have some Amazon links for you guys, things that I'm actually interested in buying. So I believe there's a very good one from Hayabusa. Their tip up is very nice. But anyway, guys, let's not talk about ice fishing now because we, we that's too far ahead. Maybe in the middle of fall or end of fall, I would do another one of these live uh, live stream and I'll recap my fall and then we'll talk about winter fishing, shall we? All right. Check out golf courses. There's a lot of small bass where I live in South. Wait, whoa, 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 wait, whoa. Did I read? Am I reading this correctly? Check out golf courses. There's a lot of smallmouth bass in South Jersey. You gotta be kidding me. Like, like, is it like a pond or is it a lake or is it a river going through? It gotta be a deep pond in order for uh, smallmouth bass to live in there, right? I mean, geez, I gotta look that up. So if you wanna PM me, let me know. Maybe we could meet up and you know catch some golf pond smallmouth bass. That'd be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty crazy. But anyway, I'm gonna jump right back into uh, fall things. So we talked about spruce. So maybe I'll start spruce run maybe in a week or two.
because you know right now it's pretty much rainy out there and there's actually an accident that happened uh, about last fishing trip not gonna get uh too detailed into it you guys gonna have to watch my next video that is coming out all right all right let's see i will be at the bar while you guys ice fishing hmm well tell you what eric you could definitely come ice fishing with us because um there are some you know there's there, there's some things that we'll be drinking and keeping us warm out there so you know i think you might want to come out at least once or twice not gonna disappoint you all right all right enough about golf pond small mouth bass we'll, we'll talk about that next time all right so there's one fish i definitely definitely want to go catch and i know a couple places where i could go get them and that is the tiger muskie if you guys have not watched my first tiger muskie ever hooked on video it was at dod ponds south jersey um it was interesting because i was drop shot fishing isolated humps for bass and crappies and all of a sudden this big thing hit my lure and started peeling out and when i brought it up it dove it dove down and cut my line so um yeah i think i'm a up my gears you know some heavy gears maybe some steel leaders and go out there and throw some big swim baits up in north jersey maybe like um i don't know mountain lake or one of those places somewhere where there, there's a lot of freaking muskies because i definitely want to land one tiger muskie by the end of this year on the kayak so that that's on my to-do list and I'll, something that's coming up real really soon actually uh round valley the, the trout's gonna start roaming the shoreline. So this is a very, very good time to start catching trout off the shoreline. So I'll probably go meet up with Zach and maybe if anybody wanna meet up and fish at the shoreline, I'll be happy to, you know, hang out, chit chat, catch some trout and everything like that. All right. All right, Michael, thank you for uh, joining my live stream. Get back to work, all right? Let's drink some water here, guys. All right, so um, that is what I'll be doing at fall. And there's actually a couple things that I want to do in fall that I'm not quite sure if I want to get into. So for those who are watching, I want to ask you guys, are you interested in me using different lures to catch some fish? And when I say different lures, I'm specifically talking about big, big lures. All right, guys. <sighs> I gotta say this guys i'm a fan of small lures everyone's been asking why you've been using those small grub tails well number one they're cheap with all the picker pickers and stuff to cut my line you know it's like very 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 um you know wallet friendly and then you know people's like you gotta use bigger bait for bigger fish and i was like okay fine fine maybe maybe i'll go out there and, and throw some big baits and you know what this is going to be the best time to throw some big baits because, you know, you have the entire summer where, you know, fish are out there, they're spawning. And when fall time comes, you know, everything's feeding, right? So technically, the early fall, small lures are still good. But by mid fall, when all the small baits are being eaten, now they have to upgrade and go through some bigger lures. You guys kind of see where I'm leading to. I already see Remy. He's like savage gear because, man, you already read my mind. Okay, good, good, good. You're actually in sync of where i'm going to next so why don't i just jump right into it all right so people have been telling me to start throwing big swim baits and glide baits so that's the question guys what do you guys think should i start throwing some big big lures you know i don't know man huddleson or you know what what are, what are some of those big uh, big ones um i'm getting brain fart actually let me just jump into tackle warehouse and go into um um Okay, there's, there's there's some Japanese one right here. Swim baits. Where are those swim baits? Okay, how about the how about this one right here? The River to Sea S waiver. That that sounds like a very good one right there. It's pretty friendly, right? Giant trout. Yes, that's what I was thinking, man. And I I don't know about the duck, man. Swimming that big duck, um, the and that bat that uh, that they showed at ICAST okay maybe i'll start with some standard stuff first you know all that crazy crazy lures right now with the ducks and and bats maybe once i get some confidence in throwing some bigger baits 
So Eric, I do have some rubber paddle tail stuff. Like, uh, you know, I, I do throw my power team lures four inch, 4.8 inch. Is it 4.8? I think it's 4.6. Uh, 4. So 4.8 uh, JP swinging hammer. And that is my biggest swim bait I have ever thrown in my life. But right now I'm talking about seven inch swim baits, like six to eight inch swim bait. Do I, I have a ruler right here. All right. So think about it, man. If I'm throwing a seven inch bait right here, the glide bait, that's like bigger, big as my hand, you know? So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll throw some of those if you guys want to throw some of those. Anarchy fishing. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Let me ask you a question since you just got in here. Sorry to put you on, um, you know, right off the bat, but I'm asking people, should I use bigger lures to catch bigger fish this upcoming fall? And the reason why I'm asking is I am on a budget, right? I, that's why I've been doing a lot of fishing with, you know, small, small grub tails, small jig heads. If I were to jump into these big glide baits, big swim baits, catch big fish uh, type things, I would need to spend big money. <laughs> what I mean by that is I, I'm going to have to buy uh, a new rod, a new reel, and these lures could run from what? Some good quality ones might be $20, or you could be ru running some JDM stuff that runs up to freaking, you know, maybe $100, right? So let's see, JDM hard bait. Oh, no, here we go. JDM swim baits at Tackle Warehouse. We have some Onimatsu swim bait sinking. That's $45.99. Oh. This Gancraft Jointed Claw Magnum 230, that's $120. Let's see what's the most, most expensive one. <laughs> oh, shoot. Dude, you guys, you guys, oh my God. Let me, let me put this li a link on the chat box right here. This guy right here is so expensive. It's, it's the Ro Roman made mother swim bait. All right, it's $439.99. Here, let me, let me paste this link to you guys so you guys could take a look at this. This is insane. All right. The link is up there if you guys want to take a look. But I definitely won't spend that money for that swim bait. But you guys could get the idea. Should I start using glide baits? All right. Well, while you guys uh, think about that, if you guys want to see that, let me know. A uh, couple of things, other things I want to try this fall. I want, um, I want to go striped bass fishing. I might want to take my kayak out to the ocean and I want to land one of those big fat cows. I've been watching like uh, Elias V or Sea um, Money Fishing and during the fall, man, that's that's the time to do it. They go out there, they snag some bunker, they live line these bunker and they be pulling in those big, big, big um, freaking stripers. The biggest striper I think I ever hooked on to might be a 20 pound, 20 pounder. I didn't weigh it, but man, it was one heck of a fight. It was pulling my kayak all over the place and this was before i was playing around with gopro uh, so i would love to go back out there i want to catch me a cow uh i think by definition cow is 40 pounds up hey eric uh, fish finder can you can you confirm for me what what's what's the size for a cow cow striped bass it was a 40 pounder and above right uh but yeah if i get something that big hit onto my kayak it's gonna take me a ride i'll be just you know set the hook Maybe I, I've set two hooks. I might be trolling two rods and then have two freaking striped bass side by side, you know, zooming out, going around a freaking uh, ocean and everything. Maybe, you know, hook on two, you know, paddle out two miles, hook on two, tell it to go back to shore, and that, that's it for the day. That, 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 that's a good video right there. Everyone would like that video. Uh, I'm getting a little hype talking about striped bass. Oh, here we go. A cow is anything about 36 inches or larger. And do you know approximately how heavy is at least a 36, like the, the, the lowest weight a 36 incher can be? Savage gliders are $22. Okay, Rabbi, it sounds like you, you know a little bit about gliders and some big swim baits. That's a $22 lure, right? Is it a good quality one? I mean, compared to the other ones that's in like 40s, 60s, 80s, and 100, and then Savage are a lot cheaper, right? It's a lot cheaper definitely a lot more affordable I, I i am liking that so i might try a couple glide savage gear gliders so i'm gonna write this down right now so savage gear gliders gear gliders all right i'm gonna look into that and see uh see uh 
if it was that definitely will fall into my budget because I, I've already looked into a rod and reel for it. So well, why don't I talk about the, my rod and reel right now? So um, you guys let me know if this is a good uh, rod and reel. So um, I am looking into 13 fishing right now. Uh, let me, I got to actually type this up because I believe they have a Muse. Muse? Yes, Muse Black swim bait. And I'm looking through their swim bait um, rods. I'm by their, it's a uh, seven foot nine inch heavy fast action. It's rated for two ounce to four ounce lures and it's $215 for the rod. Ouch, man, $215 for the rod, man. So that was the rod I was thinking to use to you know, start throwing some glide baits and big swim baits. So let me know if you guys think that's a good idea or if, if I should go to the lower end. They actually do have a lower end rod, I think in, was it Fate Black or Defy Black? One of them actually has swim bait rods. So let me just check. Uh, definitely not the, um, definitely not the fate black. So let's, I think, I think the five would have one. Aha, actually they do have one. Look at that. The defy black has two swim bait rods. They have an eight footer heavy action at $80. You kidding me? $80, $80 swim bait rod. That sounds uh, good. What, what do you guys think? Should I, should I go with the, the, the muse? The two hundred and twenty dollar rod, or should I go with the eighty dollar rod? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's see what else. Catch them all. Been using live target for snook. Try using something for stripers. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm when in Rome, you do what Romans do, right? So these these guys um, who's been catching in those big cows. They just snag bunker and just use it. Like I don't, I'm not a pure lure fisherman. Like let's separate the, uh, the swim baits fishing and the um, the glide bait swim bait fishing and striper. I think striper. I would just, I think I would snag a bunker and try a live line one. Uh, I might do some vertical jigging with some uh, some spoons and stuff like that. But definitely um, w when I want to do striper fishing not not de dealing with the uh the glide bait stuff because that's a little too expensive i don't think i want to you know snap a rod or drop a rod into the ocean I, I, i'm gonna have to dive for it and um i might not be able to get it but uh yeah for the glide bait swim bait stuff that's strictly fresh water so that would be for a largemouth bass of course and probably muskies because you know technically the same outfit they use to glide baits and stuff actually glide baits before i went to bass uh the bass um fishing scene those big swim bait and glide bait they were actually used for big pikes and muskies so technically i'll be fishing both with those type of lures anyway so um yeah that's what i'm doing with those glide baits uh more affordable than a better quality than cheaper one try to find a used rod for your budget i see i see hmm i mean that is true that is why I'm questioning, should I get the cheaper one or should I get the $200 one? Uh, $200 one is okay. It is within within my budget because I still got to get a reel, right? So I need to get a big reel. Remy, it seems like you're pretty um, um, knowledgeable about glide baits, swim baits, and stuff. What reel would you suggest for my glide bait? Hey, what's up, Bass Bite Fishing? Do I do carp fishing at all? I done one carp fishing session this year. I didn't get too much views on it. Uh, I, I do it once in a while and, you know, I hang out with my friends. So if, if you, if you want to see me do another carp video, just let me know. I, I'll be happy to do some carp videos. Uh, my friend, he catches like 30, 30, 40 pound carps. And he texted me recently. He, he told me that around fall, the, I guess they still, uh, they have fed up since the entire summertime and uh, they're pretty much fat and based on um, i guess textbook a carp could eat up to 30 percent of the weight each day so if if it was a you know a 10 pound carp it could eat three pounds of grass a day that's that's insane three pounds of food for a human it's even that's just too, i don't know man they're they're one big fat stuff so in the fall before all the plants die down they have an entire summer to eat all those plants they're going to be some fat 
fat carp. So I can go out there and catch a big carp if you guys want me to go catch some carp. Let's see. I use a Pen Battle 6000. Oh, Pen Battle 6000. Okay. Pen Battle 6000. Let's take a look at that. So that is a spinning reel for sw big swim baits. You you saw you saw that uh, and glide baits on a spinning spinning reel. It makes sense. I mean, it will work, I guess, right? I was actually looking more towards of a casting type reel, but uh, I guess I can. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, why don't I also explore the world of spinning rods for a big glide bait combo? I'll write that down too. Pen 6000 reel. All right, guys. So I think I covered what I'm going to be doing for uh, my fall fishing. I know some people were excited and already talked about ice fishing. Um, but uh, I will definitely do ice fishing in uh, the winter time. But at this time, I'm going to open up to everyone who's at the live stream right now. If you guys have any questions, you know, personal fishing question, specific fishing questions, feel free to ask them. Um, and, you know, if you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to end my live stream. Let's see. By the way, Remy, thank you for uh, participating in this live stream. I really uh, appreciate uh, all the information you have provided me for uh, my next adventure, which is getting into some big baits, some glide blades, and uh, some swim baits. So I appreciate that. If I have any questions, I will definitely PM you. So I'll probably give you a quick screenshot too. Just, actually, can I open your name, uh, your your page here? This whole new screen uh, interface is like kind of weird. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Got you. All right, guys, so it appears that there's no questions. So guys, thank you for joining my live stream today. Stay tuned for my next video. It should be out very, very soon. I'm actually wrapping up right now and uh, I'll probably do some final touches. I was fishing at behind Six Flag Great Adventure. Oh, I have a question. PB Bass, personal best bass. I caught personal best bass last November and it's, it was about almost six pounds, but because the scale was a little bit rusty and old, we said it was a five. And, uh, we said five and a half, uh, but I think it might be a six uh, six pounder. If you check out, do I have a photo anywhere around here that I could share? Mm, I got my phone here. All right, so let's see if I, this shows up. Do, 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 do. I should have it somewhere here. Aha. Here we go. Can you guys see that? I I personally think it's a six pounder, uh, but you know because the scale was not the best, uh, we decided to be, you know, I, I don't want to be burned saying that it's a six pounder, so we said it was a five and a half. So that was my personal best caught using a JP swinging hammer. It's like a four point eight inch swim bait. Uh, and I put it on a jig head. So I swam that. I slow rode it in the end of November when the water was cold. And it was probably the only fish that I that hit during the day. So I was very, very excited. But the, my personal best that I actually um, landed would be a nine pound skipjack tuna. I don't, I don't catch too big of a uh, fish, but um, this fall, I'm hoping to catch some big, big fish, especially once I start using the, those glide baits. I'm hoping I'll land like a big, giant muskie. And if I'm going up north to uh, catch some salmon with uh, a couple of folks that have uh, been telling me earlier in the live stream, you know, potentially there might be some big, really, really big um, salmon that I'll be hooking up. Um, do bloodworms work in freshwater? Oh, absolutely, Lisa. So. Uh, people who fish bloodworms, they usually bottom fish it. So things that will hit it, bluegill, white perch, yellow perch, catfish. There's a lot of people that will um, uh, catch catfish using bloodworms. But I wouldn't suggest using bloodworms because bloodworms is actually more expensive. If you're going to go catch fish in fresh water, you can actually go cheaper and just get night crawlers and, you know, save some money. 
Let's see. <laughs> Thank you for being my fan, man. Uh, you people might say uh, Leo is a dink master because he catch micro fish, but I might be the second dink master because I, I all I catch are small fish. But maybe if I catch me a, a official six pounder, all right, because I have a scale. I carry it all the time with me. If I catch a really, really big one, I'm definitely gonna weigh it and you know say I caught a big fish. All right, or a ten pound, a ten pound musky, twenty pound musky, that'd be great. All right, um, geez, I don't know how long I have been live streaming, but let's take a look. It says started live streaming 35 minutes ago. Well, guys, I am basically wrapping up. If you guys don't have any more questions, I really appreciate for those who stop by, you know, say hi to me. And um, yeah, if you guys have any more questions, you guys know my Instagram is raw fishing, or you guys could check me out on Facebook. I think Facebook might be a little easier if you do, uh, you, if you guys message me, you know, feel free to message me anytime you guys have any fishing questions or whatnot. So um, yeah, thank you for watching guys. Thank you for joining my live stream. I appreciate uh, you guys watching my videos and everything um it's labor day weekend so make sure you guys have some fun with your family i know that, that uh, some of my family members are going back to school and stuff like that so uh this is kind of like the last weekend before everyone kind of go do their own thing so i'm gonna go hang out with some of those folks so anyway guys again tight lines take care until next time Let's see where is the stop button here we go